guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. This is Sports with Strawberry Ice. I'm your host, Jeff Trenopole. And as always, I'm bringing you sports from a west side point of view right here in the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio, my hometown. All right, here's the rundown of the topics I will be discussing today. The Bearcats, John Brandon, still trying to prove his team, has signed two grad transfers this week. I'll tell you more about them later on. The Bengals, they're still at it. Signed another free agent. And I cannot wait. A week from today, the Bengals will announce that they are drafting Joe freaking Burrow. I cannot wait to get to that. So we can shut everybody up in the media. <laughs> All right, Bearcat news. The Bearcats received commitments from guard transfer David DeJulius and Colgate guard transfer Rapil Ivaniskinis. I think that's how you say his name. I tried. <laughs> These two guys are welcome additions with ex experience the Bearcats need. The Bearcat Journal managed to speak with DeJulius to find out what Cincinnati fans can expect when he joins the team. DeJulius, it's the best environment for me to thrive in, spiritually, physically, and mentally, said DeJulius. The Big Ten is arguably the most competitive conference, and coming from a school such as Michigan, sorry, that's the way I we're from Ohio, so you, you don't pr pronounce the M, it's Michigan. It's kind of like Pittsburgh, you know, the Sucky Niners, you know, stuff like that. Okay, <laughs> coming from a school from Michigan, like Michigan. I believe I've been on a bright enough stage where nothing is too big for me. The Julius goes on to say, offensively and defensively, I feel it is a perfect fit, meaning the Bearcats. Every, um, I feel that we have every piece possible to be successful this year. I will bring leadership, toughness, and our leadership toughness, toughness, defense, and scoring. The most important thing is that I make my teammates better. Well, he's most likely going to be a point guard for them, so that's good. Now, in year two of Brandon Ball, they now have a roster of players that can play the style of ball that Brandon wants to play. With speedy point guards, shooters on the wing, and Depth and versatility are in abundance. And dramatic scoring. Now, the biggest thing to this, you can see bits and pieces of how Brandon wants to run the offense. He wants it up and down. Pass, 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 shoot. Defense, full court press. This team is going to be more able to do what he wants to do. So 2020-2021 year is going to be a lot more like Brandon wants to play basketball. All right, get back to DeJulius. DeJulius will be a key piece to the puzzle as the talented guard has shown he can score in bunches when he dropped 20 points on Maryland in the regular season finale. Quoting. Now, as you know, I know Bearcat broadcaster Terry Nelson. So I, I text him, said what he thought about the uh, the two grad transfers they got. And I got it. Quoting uh, Bearcat broadcaster Terry Nelson, they are both elite level talents and, uh, and are a major pickup for the Cats. So like I said, last year, Brandon had so much other stuff he had to deal with even before the season started. I mean, he's a new coach. I think he got hired right around now, this time last year, which is kind of late. Maybe it was a couple weeks before, but he was kind of late coming, you know. So he had to struggle with trying to get the guys that were already here to stay and then figure out who was going to stay and then trying to get freshmen to come in here and also trying to get the grad uh, portal transfers in here. And he brought all that together for a very successful season. Yes, it was a very... Up and down season, stressful at times. 
But as I said before in the past, I really think this season has shown the character and stability that John Brandon is going to bring to the Bearcats in the future. Now, this new thing with the grad portal transfer, to me, I know, okay, I'll say Kentucky fans because I'm hearing it from Kentucky fans. Like, oh, you guys are getting this guy. Oh, that's really good. You know, they get, you know, potential NBA players. Okay. I'm comparing this to Huggins, Bob Huggins' second year, third year. Those are the years he really got the junior college transfers. He got Nick Van Exel. He got Terry Nelson. He got Corey Blunt. You know, all these guys he got from junior college. Brandon's doing the same thing, except it's through grad transfers. So you don't have to be the All-American great player to have a great run in college. As long as you find the right system that fits you and the right coach that fits you, you can go a long way. And the way Brandon is going to set this up, I think it plays out that it it plays better in the NCAA tournament, which I was really hoping we'd find out how he did this year, but that didn't happen. But if you notice, the, the teams that have the best guard plays are the teams that go the farthest. If you look at the 92 Final Four team, they weren't that big. I mean, I think, we, yeah, we had Reichenegger. He was seven feet, but he never played. <laughs> but of guys who played, Corey Blunt was the tallest. I think he was like 6'10", 6'11". But it didn't matter. Our guard play and the pressure that we put on the ball made a huge difference. And that's the way I see Brandon running this offense. Now, they are going to use the three-point shot way more than the 92 team. Because just in basketball in general, it is a bigger emphasis now than it ever has been. And he's getting shooters. And like Terry Nelson said on his the interview I had with him last week, uh, John Brandon does the analytics where he knows what side of the court these guys shoot from the best. So he can run the plays to get them in their spots. So John Brand's very analytical and very he's a very good coach. I mean, I, I think Bearcat fans are really going to find out how good a coach he is this year and really appreciate what he did this past year of what he had to go through. But my point is that the teams that he's going to put together this year, a lot of shooters, a lot of guards, it's going to be fun to watch. And yes, they may struggle against bigger teams, but if you outscore them and you play tougher defense than they do, it doesn't matter what size you are. So, again, I'm very excited. I think, obviously, Luke Fickle, he's doing killing it on the recruiting class. Um, John Brandon, uh, he's got a lot of good freshmen coming in. No, we're not McDonald's All-Americans. Give us time, all right? We'll get there. Like I said, if you look at it to Huggins, this is, I just, because I really see a lot of Huggins coaching, I mean, not the, not the anger, not the yelling, and you know, but the way his early teams were, you know, I see that in Brandon's coaching style. Now, like I said, there could be more shooters and outside shooting than than uh, Huggins' teams had, but the way things are lining up, it could be a good run because after the '92 team, Huggins started getting McDonald's All Americans. You make a good run in the NCAA tournament, those guys will come play for you. So, it's these first two to three years that Brandon has to get these grad transfers and get these guys in here to potentially lead to better, I don't want to say better, I don't want to say better players, but higher ranked players. We'll put it that way. So, these are all very exciting times for Bengals, Bengals, Bearcats, uh, football and basketball. I'm just very excited about Cincinnati sports in general. Hopefully we get back to sports sometime soon. That would be great. But I'm very excited about it. Okay. This show and every show is brought to you by T-Properties. T-Properties, quality housing for quality people. Check out their website at www.tpropertiesllc.com for all your rental property management needs and your rental needs. All right. Like I said in the rundown, one week from today, the Bengals will be hearing Roger Goodell say with the number one pick, the Cincinnati Bengals draft Joe freaking Burrow. He probably won't say freaking, but he'll say Joe Burrow. 
And hopefully everybody can shut up. <laughs> I had, I, I, trust me, I enjoy all the comments. All the comments you guys make on my, my, you, my videos, I enjoy all of them. Even the ones I don't agree with. Like this one guy said that the Bengals <laughs> should sign Cam Newton and draft Chase Young. I said, my counter was, okay, you want them to, to sign a quarterback who's been hurt for the last two years. And if you want Chase Young so bad, then the Bengals should just go ahead and trade or assign Jadavion Clowney. Because right now you can get him probably pretty cheap. I'm still hoping they do that. <laughs> and his comeback was, well, uh, the Broncos did it and they won a Super Bowl. Yeah, the Broncos signed Peyton Manning. He's a little different than Cam Newton. <laughs> I mean, Cam Newton, don't get me wrong, Cam Newton in his prime when he was healthy was a very good quarterback. He won the NFL MVP. Peyton Manning is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Not even close to the same thing. You can't compare them. Sorry. Anyway, but the Bengals are still at it. They signed another free agent. Nobody big, but it could be a diamond in the rough. The Bengals signed former Florida State and former XFL running back Jaquez Pat, uh, Patrick. In four seasons at FSU, Patrick totaled 1,790 yards in rushing and 17 touchdowns. Now, at FSU, Patrick played behind guys like Cam Atkins and Davin Cook, so he didn't see the field as much as I'm sure he'd like. After going undrafted, Patrick was selected by the Tampa Bay Vipers of the XFL. Now, in five games, Patrick recorded 254 yards rushing and two TDs. Now, this is the kind of exciting one. This might have been uh, the Vipers' last game. I'm not sure when the XFL ended. I, I didn't watch a game of it, but kind of wish I would have watched this one now because we signed you. But on March 1st, he carried the ball 21 times for 108 yards and one TD. Now, Patrick, he's only 23 years old. He's six foot three, and he's 235 pounds. He is one big-bodied running back. And the Bengals keep adding players. Now, don't get this twisted. They didn't sign him to not sign Joe Mixon. <laughs> don't even, that's not even, that's not even in the cards. I still believe in my heart of hearts that the Bengals are going to sign Joe Mixon. Like I said, just because they're drafting Joe Burrow, they've signed all these free agents, they have so much good karma and good momentum going, I hope, and I feel this way, that they're not going to create a holdout I want to see not not to end the good vibes, but mostly to help out Joe Burrow. I really do feel that they are going to give Joe Burrow all the weapons he can and the best uh, line they can to help him succeed. Now I was listening to um, see Chad Brendel was on um, Sizzy three hundred and sixty today. He was in for uh, Tony Pike, and Richard Skinner was his guest. And sometimes listening to Richard Skinner talk is like for me listening to chalk. Or nails on a chalkboard. He's just so smug and so... Well, you know, his thought. This is it. His thoughts were, the Bengals, you know, they should just take all the picks because you can get a lot of guys for that and all these number one picks and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, you don't know if uh, Joe Burrow is going to be that good or not. And, and he is right. There's only been like one number one overall pick in recent memory that's taken their team to the Super Bowl. And that was uh, Eli Manning. Um, the other one was... Uh, what was his name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, his, uh, what, Manning brother? What's the other guy's name? Uh, uh, Peyton. Oh, yeah, Peyton Manning. Yeah, those two took their team to the Super Bowl. Now, the reason I am discounting what Skinner says is because Joe Burrow is compared to Peyton Manning. The Indianapolis Colts drafted Andrew Luck. If they had taken care of him, now this is where the Bengals have got to learn from the Colts. If the Colts had taken care of Andrew Luck, he probably could have gotten the Colts to the Super Bowl. You know, if they had done got an offensive line like they had last year, two years earlier, Luck's probably still playing. So that could have been another number one pick that um, 
what took their team to the Super Bowl. Yes, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, as uh, Forrest Gump says. But I've said this a million times. The point is, if Joe Burrow, or put it this way, if Miami thinks Joe Burrow is that good, why would they want to give up three number ones for him? Because they do. They think he's that good. So why would the Bengals not want to draft him? Why would you not take a shot? I would kick myself even more if the Bengals passed up on Joe Burrow and he's as good as they think he is. I mean, look at this way. The Bears, they traded up to go get Trubisky. They passed on Patrick Mahomes. They passed on Watson from Tennessee. Both of them are better quarterbacks than Trubisky. The Bengals don't have to trade up. Trade up. He's Joe Burrow sitting right there. So if you believe that he's that guy, you go take the chance on it. The Bears believe Trubisky was. They were wrong. It happens. You know, I mean, I still, to this day, Carson Palmer, if he had not hurt his shoulder, not his knee, his shoulder in Cleveland, I think he could have been a Hall of Fame quarterback for the Bengals. Now, he got sick of whatever he got sick of. I mean, his last year, he had to deal with Chad Johnson and Terrell Owens. By the way, Terrell Owens was Carson Palmer's idea to bring in here. So, he brought that on himself. But, if you look back, when he hurt his shoulder, that's when his accuracy went down. It wasn't his knee. Anyway, those are my topics today. I hope you guys enjoyed them. You know, you can leave me a message down below on YouTube. Or, you can comment on my Facebook groups, because I always leave this uh, link on the Facebook groups that I help run, which is Bengals Nation, Reds Country, and Bearcat Country. YouTube subscribers. I am up to 375. That is awesome. Let's try to get to 400 as soon as we can. That would be great. Just keep telling everybody about me. You know, I know it's all Cincinnati sports. Maybe I should do some national stuff, but I'm a Cincinnati guy, and I kind of want to keep it Cincinnati. If you're listening to me on the podcast, if it's on Apple Podcast, do me a favor, give me a five-star review. If you're on YouTube, YouTube, Spotify, Beanpot, or any of the other ones, subscribe to my show. It'll pop up on your phone. As always, like, subscribe, share. Wash your hands. Take care of yourself. Let's get through this thing, and hopefully, I've sports sometimes. That's your sports, baby. See you guys.